Hello again, everyone. So I decided I was going to make two videos today because it's back to work tomorrow. So try to fit in a couple this weekend because I'm not sure when the next time I can upload. So today's second video is going to be on the seven principles of magic and witchcraft. So let's dive right in. Don't mind the hair. I mean, the hair has like a, just has a mind of its own. It does what it wants. You know, all these like little, I have hair down to my butt, yet you probably never know by all of these little short new hairs just having a party up top. So I do have my notes over here because I get sidetracked and I get, uh, I can't even think of the word I want to use. This is why I have notes. Let's dive right in. So the first principle is the principle of correspondence. And um, as within, so without, as above, so below. Our lives, our reality is a reflection of our thoughts and we consciously and unconsciously manifest things in our life. If you are experiencing a lot of quote unquote bad luck, uh, do yourself a favor and review your thought patterns a few days to even a few months prior to the run of bad luck. Uh, words and thoughts become reality. Now, I, I use bad luck in quotations because I don't believe in luck. I don't believe in luck. I believe that everything happens as it's supposed to. I believe that we manifest things um, in our life. And I believe karma is a thing. And I believe that sometimes people get a taste of their own karma. Karma come, uh, That's not what I'm trying to say. Uh, karma gets delivered. And some people experience their dose of bad karma for what they've dished out. And uh, they call it bad luck. It may not be bad luck. It probably is uh, you just getting what you've put out. Um, in some cases, they are, it's not always karma. In some cases, it is uh, lessons that we need to learn to push us through someplace that we're stuck. And this bad, quote unquote, bad luck is that uncomfortable phase that we need to push ourselves out of, that we grow as a person um, on all levels. Um, let's see. Words and thoughts become reality. If your mind is filled with negativity, everything around you will soon follow. Check in with yourself often to keep track of mental thought patterns. Take responsibility for them. This is important. We cannot blame everyone else for something that is happening in our life. We are the controller of our own destiny. We decide how we react. We decide how someone is going to affect us. And if somebody is affecting us, then guess what? We have that option to remove them. We cannot blame anyone else. We can only look at ourselves and how we have control to change the situation to fit our life. We have to start taking responsibility. Not everyone, and nope, that's not right. Not everything is someone else's fault. And even if someone is the cause of something in our lives, we have the choice on how to deal with it. Learn to visualize daily of what you want and see yourself attaining that desire. Be mindful when manifesting. And being mindful is just making sure that your thoughts are in line with what you are trying to manifest. If you are trying to manifest something and your mind drifts and you start saying things like, you know, inside your mind, like, you know, this is not going to happen or, you know, anything that is like self-doubting of your abilities or your uh, ability to attain what you're trying to achieve, then it's not going to happen because you are already setting yourself up for failure by doubting your own abilities. The second principle is the principle of mentalism. Uh, this is the concept of there being a higher power. However you refer to this higher power, whether it be the universe, deities, etc., It can be, you know, divinity in some form to you. It can be the universe. It could be deities. Uh, however you choose this higher power. Uh, what it may be for you. This matters when it comes to manifestation. Who and what do you call on where do you want to send your intention? 
So are you calling upon yourself? If so, that's fine. But where is that intention going? Is it going to the universe to manifest, to come back? It, it has to manifest somehow, right? It doesn't, you don't just, it's, this is not a TV show where you wiggle your nose and then it appears in front of you and it happens. It has to manifest. So where are you sending this intention? Thoughts and energy, especially when you project them somewhere to be manifested, to which then they become reality. So this is you taking a thought, an idea, a want, a desire, a need, and turning it into something tangible, something that appears into your life. Understand your higher power. If it's deities, do you have a relationship with them? Very important. I cannot express how important this is. It is not just a gimme, 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 gimme type of relationship. That's not fair. And that's how things should not be. And if that's how it is, then you need to reevaluate why you only show up to your deities when your hands are out. That is not the way to approach a deity. Um, you need to honor them. Um, and you need to show respect and you need to build a relationship with them if you are working with deity. Uh, do you understand how the universe, universe works as a boomerang if that's your higher power? So the universe does work like a boomerang. You send out your intention. It then comes around. When it comes back to you, it comes as a manifestation. It, it comes into your life. Knowing what you're working with and this being an all-knowing thought will 100% help your magic. Learning how to project thought into reality is the principle of mentalism. Number three is the principle of vibration. Everything in the universe vibrates, including us. Different things vibrate at different frequencies, feelings, emotions, energy, Every, all of that vibrates, even emotion. Like when you are expressing something to someone and you're passionate or you're upset or you're extremely happy, there's a vibration that's associated with each feeling. We are tapping, oh no, that's the wrong place. This is why empaths feel what we feel. We are tapping into that vibration. And so then we are feeling what other people are feeling. Uh, the principle of vibration is feeling the vibration of your intentions, your manifestations, and your energy. Recognizing how you feel during these times and especially when you attain your desire, that feeling has a vibration. When you have successfully manifested something that you put the energy and work into, to manifest. When you achieve that and receive that, how do you feel in that moment? It is important to be mindful in that moment how you feel. That feeling has a vibration and that vibration you want to tune into when you are manifesting because that is what will help you attain your desires. Uh, let's see. Recognizing how you feel during these times and especially when you attain your desire, that feeling has a vibration. Practice learning that vibration. Once you familiarize yourself with that frequency, you can tap into it and use it to assist you in manifesting at a much higher success rate because your vibration will match what you are trying to attain. Write down what the vibration feels like. Is, is it an emotion? Um, is there an emotional association? Do you feel pins and needles? Do, what do you feel? How do you feel? How do you describe this feeling? and then try to be in that mindset when you go and manifest. Number four, the principle of cause and effect. I don't believe in luck. Um, I don't believe anything happens by chance. What you put out, you get back. Now, not everybody believes this. There are some, many people that don't believe in the law of karma. That is quite all right. That is fine. But in the same aspect, right, what we put out, and, and this is what I just want to make clear, okay, because there are some people, and I'm not doubting them, and I'm not saying that they are wrong. However, my 
mindset, my opinion is. I do not deny karma for the simple reason is that how can I say that what I'm putting out into the universe towards another person can't come back to me and manifest in my own life against me or for me if it's a positive karma, right? But if I put out manifestations for myself, if I put out that intention for myself, that has the ability to come back to me manifested. So why are I, how could I possibly ignore that I'm putting out my energy and it's going to manifest for me something I want, right? But it's not possible for me to give out energy towards another person and then that go around the, the universe and come back to me. For me, you can't have one without the other. For me, my opinion, my belief. I, I'm not projecting. I'm just giving my opinion. This is why I do not discount karma. This is why I think it's real because if we are, no matter what energy we're putting out in the universe, it comes back. You cannot, well, I'm not saying you, but I cannot say that if I'm putting out, if I'm casting a spell and I want to attain, you know, let's say health, right? Let's say, let's say I'm doing a health spell. I'm putting out that energy to manifest in the universe and it's going to come back to me. But then I say, I don't believe in karma, which is putting out an intention into the universe towards that person, really. You don't, and that, that doesn't come back to me. You know, so for me, it just make I, I can't have one without the other. Now, what you put out you back, I am not talking about karma, even though I just did talk about karma, but that was just my own personal opinion. Uh, I am talking about energy. Use dominoes for an example, right? Energy. The, the continuous movement of other objects caused by the energy and force used on one object. You hit that one domino and it continues and it won't stop until the dominoes end. Action, inaction, and how it affects your life. Now, if you are going through something, or if you want something in your life, or you're trying to attain something, but you don't do anything about it, right? The cause and effect is that you are not doing anything to bring this into your life. Therefore, you will not achieve this into your life. Opposite is action right? I want this. Therefore, I'm going to put my energy and intention into this to achieve it. Not only am I going to cast this spell, but I'm going to start working in my life, taking steps towards that goal. That way I have a higher success rate of achieving, knowing that I put some hard work in there as well. It's not, it's not just energy. I'm not saying that that doesn't work alone because it does. Energy work does work alone. But I'm also going to put some footwork in there as well. So my action will then equal my result. You are the only thing in your way or in the way of you getting what you want. You are literally the only thing. We can try to pretend. You can lie to yourself. You can try to pretend like... Uh, there are obstacles in your way. There may be some obstacles in your way, but that does not mean that you cannot achieve what you want. If you convince yourself that the obstacles are too great and that you cannot overcome them, then who's the one stopping you? You are. If we go through something and we are so quick to blame another person, instead of looking at how maybe we handled the situation or how what we could have done to remove ourselves from such a situation, who's responsible for that? Who was responsible for us? I am only responsible for me. I am not responsible for anyone else but me. Therefore, I have the responsibility in making sure that if something happens and I have the ability to then make the choice to remove myself from said situation and not react and therefore I cannot blame I cannot blame anybody else I can only blame myself 
we are, and the same applies to the cause and effect. We are the only ones standing in our way. You can't blame anyone or anything. If you do not act on what you want to achieve, if you do not take steps in the direction of what you want to achieve, if you do not put energy forth in what you want to achieve, you will not get what you want to achieve. The only person stopping you is you. Number five is the principle of polarity. The principle of polarity is all about balance. Um, there is duality in every aspect of life. Happiness and sadness, day and night, hot and cold, dry and wet. It goes on and on. Light and dark, you know, as far as aspects of the personality, the human. Um, you can't have one without the other. It's impossible. If you did, now imagine that one day the sun is gone and now we have all darkness. Or let's say if the moon was gone or let's just say that the sun never set ever it stayed high noon all the time can you imagine how that would affect our planet our life we would all die off agriculture would you know as far as like the, the seasons the cycles how plants would grow um things like that animals all, all of that would all be disturbed we need the cycles of the sun, we need the cycles of the moon. They need to be balanced. We need that balance. Imagine if it was always hot and it never cooled off. Imagine if it just rained constantly, it was just always wet. Or imagine if it never rained at all, it was always dry. Imagine if we were always happy and we never felt any other emotion besides happiness. Imagine if we were always sad. Their duality is necessary in life. So you have this, this polarity, the principle of polarity is all about balance. We need the balance of both, of all involved in order to be healthy. Find the balance within yourself, accept all aspects. This is, you need to accept all aspects of yourself, all of them, good, bad, in between. And I, I said in another video, bad, I use that term loosely, that you have the shadow self, you have the light body, you have the light self, you have everything in between. You know, there's no such thing as bad. Everything is, is, is equal. Uh, this is your light side and your shadow self, all aspects. Finding the positive and negative situations is important. There are positives, but you have to find them. Now, there are people that are among us and I know that you know when I say this I know that you're gonna be like I know someone just like that the yeah buts the yeah but people I cannot associate with I just cannot they come to you with a problem you have advice or a solution and it's the yeah but yeah but this yeah but that they are choosing to be upset that is a choice they are making a conscious choice to be miserable. Those people are not looking for a, an ending to their problem. What they're looking for is attention. They're looking for someone to say, oh, poor thing, I'm so sorry. They're looking for someone to join them in their misery. They want someone to, to just continuously bitch and moan about things. Find the positive in the negative. It will change your outlook on a lot of things, I promise you. It will. Don't be a yeah but. Don't be a yeah but. A lot people, especially empaths, we don't like yeah but people. We it's not that we don't like them. We can't handle them. We don't even know how to process a yeah but person because as much as we want to help, you cannot help someone who does not want to be helped. Don't be a yeah but. Um, find the positive and the negative. Find it. They are there. They're always there. If anything, it's a learning experience. If anything, you grow from the experience. Bad shit happens. Absolutely. Is it your karma? Is it a 
like a, a, a moment of growth that the universe is pushing us through, there is a positive in every negative. You just have to be willing to find it. Once you do this, the situation and how you view the situation over time becomes balanced because you can say, oh yeah, well that was shitty, absolutely, but I'm aware that of how much I grew during that time. I'm aware that I needed to experience that because A, B, C, X, Y, Z, whatever. You know, I'm, I'm aware that that was shitty, but I'm also aware that I had done some things that, you know, I wasn't proud of and karma comes back around and I had to deal with it and I had to learn from that experience. There's positives everywhere. Just there, wherever there's negative, there's an equal positive. You gotta find it. Number six, the principle of gender. Everything is both masculine and feminine. You do not have one without the other. This ties into the principle of polarity, um, the duality of them. You cannot have masculine without feminine. Look at the human body. Women have estrogen, but they create testosterone. Men, majority testosterone, but they create estrogen. You have both. We have this principle of gender that I am a woman and that is a man, but that man creates the same estrogen that my woman body creates. And my woman body creates testosterone just as that man body creates. There is no one or the other. There is only both. You can't have one without the other. Both exists in everything. In everything. I get fired up about these because, you know, there's there's a lot that in this that that really drives me that I'm passionate about because there's so many excuses that people come up with. And yet I feel like they know, they know that they're not hurt, they're not helping themselves, they're hurting themselves. And that's why I feel like this video was so necessary. And this is why I have notes because see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go off on a whole different route for a second here. You have to bear with me. People have the ability to help themselves, but they choose not to. Instead, they live in this space and they live here and they get so comfortable that they end up hurting themselves repeatedly over and over again. And many times when they are hurting themselves, so many people project their pain onto other people or they're blaming everybody else for the pain that they have caused themselves. And this is not the way to be. So back to the principle of gender. Um, this reflects the principle of polarity because you can't have one without the other. They are an equal yet opposite balance. This exists in everything, not just humans. Masculine, masculine energy is the expre expression and deals with actions, will, and giving out energy in regards to expression. Feminine energy is the receiving of impressions by creation. All creations in your imagination, like ideas, thoughts, concepts, etc. And last but not least is number seven, the principle of rhythm. Amongst the chaos, there is order. A purpose and nothing. That's not right. Let me just read that for a second. <laughs> I wrote down my own notes that I can't even understand. <laughs> nothing is an accident. Uh, look at the patterns around us. Seasons, moon cycles, sun cycles, aging, heartbeats, the tides, all of the patterns you see around us, they all work in a rhythm. There's, they have a purpose. They have a, they have a drive. They have a pattern. They have something that they follow repeatedly over and over again. A, a pattern that you can trust because it has been this way for such a long time that they have never proved to be anything different. Nothing is random. How do you use the principle of rhythm in the craft? Uh, you use the principle of rhythm in your Sabbaths. You celebrate the wheel of the year. Uh, you 
you celebrate the lunar cycles and you work with the lunar phases, uh, planetary movements, astrology, all of that. Use the principle of rhythm to work your magic, knowing what moon cycle is best to work with for your purpose, what herbs and crystals uh, and their properties that would work best with what you're trying to do, the time of the day and that, that association that would work best with what you're trying to do. Um, aligning yourself with your own vibration and the vibrations of everything around you. Um, this can definitely be associated with chakra work and opening your chakras and, and really you know, opening up those energy centers of your body. You can manifest anything you desire at any time, but using the principle of rhythm, you add power and energy to your work. So those are the seven principles of magic in regards to witchcraft. So I do hope that this video was helpful and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.